Okay, let's look at a problem. So the first problem, you got a box containing three red balls and five green balls. So let's say you have a box. Oh, the camera I'm going to be over here. Let's say you have a box. In this box, you got four red marbles, three blue marbles, and two green marbles. I am going to randomly select how many you got on your homework. Only two. Let's select three. So I'm going to randomly select three marbles. So what is the probability that they're all red? Now there's two ways you can do it. It's just a, it's just a matter of you want to think about it as a combination or you want to think of it as a permutation. Now, if you think of it as a combination, then what you're going to do is you're just going to reach into this box and just pull out all three balls at once. There's no order. You just reach and pull out three. So what's the denominator going to be? Out of these nine balls, how many ways can I select three of them? Nine, nine choose three. There's no order. This is a combination, if you, if you did the problem this way. How many red marbles are in the box? Four. How many ways can I select three of them to be in my hand? Four, choose three. That's your answer. You got the formula right off the bat. But you can also think about it as, I'm just going to pick one ball, look at it, take out another ball, look at it, take out a third ball. And if you do that way, there's an order. Okay. So another way you can do it is, what's the probability of pulling out a red ball on the first, a red ball on the second, and a red ball on the third? I'll get rid of this equal sign. Okay, so here. I'm going to reach my hand in. What's the probability that the ball is going to be red? Four out of nine. Okay, but now there's only eight balls left, right? What's the probability of pulling out another red? Three out of eight. And then another red? Two out of seven. And is that the only order you can get three reds? How many three-letter words can you make with R, R, R? One. There's, that's the only order. So that would be your formula. You don't have to multiply it by anything. Can you see that both of these things are equal? Well, let's take a look at this. How would you compute 4 choose 3? 3, 2, 1, under 4, 3, 2. And then how do you compute 9 choose 3? 3, 2, 1, under 9, 8, 7. The 3, 2, 1s cancel out. And can you see that they're exactly the same? 4, 9s, 3, 8s. Two sevens. It's exactly the same. It's just a way of thinking about it. So there's two ways of thinking about it. Pull out all three balls at once, or pull out one ball at a time. But you got to be careful now. When you pull out one ball at a time, you got to consider the order. Because if you don't, you know what that is, fatal error. So what's the probability of getting one of each color? One of each color. Okay, so if you, if you think about this doing a combination, again, if I pull, pull out all three balls at once, what's the denominator going to be? Nine choose three. There's nine total balls. I'm just going to pull out three. But now I want one of each color. So that means I want one red, one blue, one green. How many red balls are in the box? Four. How many ways can I select one of them? Four choose one. Okay, how many ways can I pull out a blue ball? Three choose one, and then a green. Two choose one, boom, that's your answer. Do not multiply this by anything because there is no order. You pulled out all three balls at once. However, if you think of it as a permutation where you pull out one ball at a time, then what you gotta do is you gotta do a specific case. Like how about red on the first, blue on the second, green on the third? What's the probability of pulling out a red ball on the first draw? Now a blue ball, three eights. Now a green ball, two sevens, right? But is that the only order that you can get one of each color? No, so you gotta times it by the number of different orders, which is, how many three letter words can you make? Three factorial, which is six. Now can you see 
see that both of these are exactly the same? Well, let's look at this. Four choose one is three. Three choose one, what do I say? Four choose one is four. Three choose one is three. Two choose one is two. And what is nine choose three? Nine, eight, seven over three, two, one. But then the three, two, one goes to the top, right? When you divide by a fraction, that's like multiplying by the reciprocal. Can you see that it's exactly the same? Look, four nines, three eighths, two sevens, and then three factorial. one more example. What's the probability of getting, how about two blues and one red? How's that? What's the probability of getting two blue balls and one red ball? So if you're going to do the combination way, pull up all at once, what's the denominator going to be? Again, nine choose three. Now I want two blue balls. How many blue balls are there? Three. How many ways can I select two of them? Three choose two. How many ways can I select one red ball? Four choose one. And that's it, that's your answer. Do not multiply this by anything. You guys understand? Because you pull all at once, there's no order. However, if you pull out one at a time, then you could go, okay, one case would be blue on the first, blue on the second, red on the third. How many ways can I pull out a blue ball on the first draw? Three out of nine. Okay, now another blue. Really? Two out of eight. And then now a red. Four out of seven. However, is that the only order that you can get two blues and one red ball? No, so you gotta ask yourself, how many three letter words can you make? That's why you gotta know combinatorics to do this job. How many three letter words can you make? Three. Well, remember, it's actually three factorial, but take a two P, so divide by two factorial, all right? Comes out to three. Can you see that they're the same? Well, let's do this one. Three choose two is three. Four choose one is four. 9 choose 3 is 9, 8, 7 divided by 3, 2, 1, but the 3, 2, 1 is going to go on top. So let's take a look at this. So you got 3 eighths, I mean 3 ninths, 2 eighths, and then 4 sevenths with a 3, and then that's 3, so it's exactly the same. So I don't care which way you do it. You either do combination way or the permutation way, but just remember, you do the permutation way, need to multiply by the number of different orders. That's the thing. That's why, see, but then each one has its, uh, you know, uh, good things and bad things. The good thing about this one is once you write it down, even though you gotta worry about this, once you write it down, you can just start canceling already, right? But over here, then you gotta like change it to this, then you can start canceling. You know what I'm talking about? But it's up to you, because uh, I really don't care which way you do it. You can just pick any way you want. Okay, now what would happen, so when I say to randomly select three marbles, that means you're just gonna pull out the marbles one at a time or all three at once. But what if I said you're going to randomly select three marbles with replacement? You ever heard that phrase before? With replacement? What does that mean? So when you see this phrase, with replacement, that means you're gonna pull out the ball, look at it, and then you're gonna put it back in the box. Then you're gonna pull out the second draw, look at the ball, put it back in the box. That's what with replacement means. This comes up in probability all the time. Which means, if you ever see that phrase, can you do the combination way? No, because combination means you gotta pull out all three balls at once. So if you see the phrase with replacement, you cannot do the combination you have to do it the permutation way. In fact, let's do the same problem. Random, uh, what's the probability of getting two blue and one red with the replacement? So let's do a specific case. Blue on the first, blue on the second, red on the third. Okay, so what's the probability of pulling out a blue ball? Three, nine. Put the marble back in the box. What's the probability of pulling out another blue ball? 
Green dice. Put the marble back in the box. What's the probability of getting a red marble? Or not. But is that the only order you can get two blues and one red? No. So how many different orders are there? Three. Three, so you gotta multiply by three, and then this one gives you a lot of chance when occurring, yeah? So what are you gonna say? What girlfriend? Look, three times three is nine. Three goes into nine three times. Final answer four over twenty-seven. And anyway, next quiz, same thing. You write the formula down, you're going to get three out of four points. The last point is can you cancel and get the simplified fraction? Please reduce. That's how you get points taken off there. Okay, and then, so there's a whole bunch of problems there. This is like card problems. Okay, there, let's do one card problem. Let's just do a couple card problems. So some of you are still shaky with cards, yeah? Okay, so from a standard deck of 52 cards, this is like problems three and four, we're going to randomly select four cards, because I see two and three with two four. So from a standard deck of 52 cards, we're gonna randomly select four cards. What's the probability that, what do you wanna do? Three of a kind? Yeah, let's do three of a kind then. Three of a kind. And then if I put this on the quiz, I'll, I'll give you like an example. For example, three aces. Okay? So cards are typically combination problems, so we'll, let's try it that way first. So how many aces are in the deck? Four. Four. How many ways can I select three of them to be in my hand? Four, choose three. But then the fourth card cannot be an ace. So how many cards in the deck are not aces? 48. 48, right? So out of those 48 other cards, how many ways can I select one of them? 48, choose one. We actually did this last chapter, right? But this is just three aces. What about like three kings, queens, jacks, tens, sixes, fours? What do I need to multiply by? 13, because there's 13, like this. Ace, king, queen, jack, 10, 9, 8. That's why if you need to write this down, write it down. There's 13 of these. So that's why you gotta multiply by 13. So last chapter, that's what we did, right? How many ways can you get three of a kind? Now it's probability. Now you just gotta put the denominator on. Well, that's the easy part. Out of the 52 cards in the deck, how many ways can you choose four of them to be in your hand? 52, choose four. That's your formula, you get three out of four points right there, bam. Now, the thing with probability is you could also do this doing a permutation, one card at a time. So let's do a specific case. You get an ace, an ace, an ace, right? Three aces and the fourth card is not an ace. What's the probability of getting an ace on the first draw? Okay, you gotta know how many aces are in the deck and what's the total number of cards? Four out of 52. Now, what about another ace? Three out of 51. And then another ace? Two out of 50. And then not an ace. How many cards in the deck are not aces again? 48, so 48 out of 49, then, right? But then, since we did the permutation way, now you gotta multiply it by the number of different orders. How many different orders can you make out of this? Or how many four letter words? Four. Well, if they were all different, it would be four factorial, but I see three A's, so you gotta divide by three factorial, which of course is four, then, right? So it doesn't matter. You can think of it, pull out all four cards at once, or you can pull out four cards one at a time. Like I said, like see, this one here, like once you know this is four, you let the canceling begin. And you guys know what card problems, you guys did this last chapter, right? Four goes into 52, 13. Three goes into 51, 17. Can I do any more canceling? Two goes into 50, 25. Uh, that's it. So see, this one I wouldn't give on a quiz because you can see the numbers are kind of big, right? So I'll probably make you just draw three cards or something. Wow probably be more like number four or something like that. Okay, but 
one thing that's new on this thing is number five. Okay, this problem is on the quiz, and it's going to be probably on the next quiz. This is called the birthday problem. This is a very famous problem in mathematics. The birthday problem. Okay, read the problem. Three people are randomly chosen. Only three? I'll probably just change that to four or five on the test or the next quiz. Find the probability that actually we don't really care about A, we want to do B, but I'm kind of leading you by the hand. B is what's the probability that at least two people were born on the same day of the week? Okay, so let me show you, tell you a little bit about the birthday problem. So you have a party, okay, you're gonna have a party in this room. How many people do I need to be in this room to be absolutely 100% sure at least two people will have the same birthday? Okay, listen to that again. How many people do I need to have at a party to be absolutely sure at least two people will have the same birthday? Otherwise, we're going to lock you up in a Turkish prison. How many people do I need? 366. Is it 366? It depends on. It depends on? Oh, yeah. It could be someone who's been born on February 29th. Is it possible for somebody to be born on February 29th or impossible? It's possible, people. There are people that have that birthday. So, now the question is, from January 1st all the way to December 31st, how many possible birthdays are there? 360, there's 366 different birthdays, because February 29th is a birthday. Or do we just don't count those people there? They don't exist to us. No, they exist. But the problem is, it's not equally likely like the other days, right? In fact, nothing is equally likely. But if we assume that every day is equally likely, then this is how many birthdays there are. But we know for a fact, February 29 only comes every four days, and then at, there's one like certain year that, that we don't count that either, right? It's not just every four years, I forget. There's something weird that happens every 100 years or something. Okay, so why don't we just say for the sake of simplicity, there's only 365 different birthdays because the probability of being born on February 29th is not the same as the other days, right? Because it only comes every four years. So why don't, we're just gonna say there's only 360 and we're gonna assume that it's equally likely, although it really isn't, but we're gonna, you guys know why it really isn't, right? Because, for example, in some places where there's snow, you guys heard of snow, right? I, I just don't know, you guys. Like when it's snow and it's cold, a lot of people stay indoors, right? And then what do they do when they're indoors? <laughs> I'll leave that to your imagination. And then babies come around. That's what happens. What is he talking about? <laughs> okay, so now, assuming there's only 365 different birthdays, if I want to be 100% sure at least two people have the same birthday, how many people need to be at this party? 366. Everybody understand that? you got to understand this. Right? Because think about it. If there's 365 people at this party, isn't it possible they all could have different birthdays? It's improbable, but it's possible. Right? But once one more person goes, guarantee he's going to match up with somebody, right? Okay, that's easy enough. Well, I don't know if that was easy. Now, here's the good part. How many people do I need to have at this party to be 50% sure at least two people will have the same birthday? Now, this is what the enumerate people say. They go, oh, let's take 50% of it, 183. Do you think that's correct? No, otherwise, why would I say enumerate? You guys know what enumerate is? You heard of illiterate? What is illiterate? So therefore, enumerate. No, we <laughs> can't do that. But whatever, okay? No, it is not 183 because that's not how probability works. So let me 
show you how the, pro the birthday problem works. Okay, somebody goes to this party. I'll just put a circle for the person. This person has a birthday, right? What's the probability that this person has a birthday? Guarantee the person has a birthday. So it's one, but I'm not going to write one. I'm going to write 365 over 365. That's because there's going to be a pattern. I'm going to show you the pattern, and hopefully you can apply the pattern to that problem. And then you're going to do it on the quiz, and probably do it on the next quiz, because this is the birthday problem. Now, a second person comes to the party. What is the probability that this person's birthday is different from that person's birthday? Okay, good. 364 over 365, because it could be any one of the other 364 days, right? Now, if you multiply these two numbers together, what, what does that mean? What's the meaning of this? This is the probability that these two people have different birthdays. That's what that means. Now, what if a third person comes to the party? What is the probability that his birthday is different from the first two? Three sixty-three. Did you do this in AP Stat? Okay, you can impress them. Everybody see that? Because these two people already have birthdays. They took two of them, so there's three hundred sixty-three left. Okay, so if I multiply these three numbers, what does this number mean then? This is the probability that they all have different birthdays. What if a fourth person, tell me when you see the pattern, okay, so we can stop. A fourth person comes to the party. What is the probability that this person's birthday is different from the first three people? 362 over 365. So if I multiply these four numbers, what does that tell me? That's the probability that these four people all have different birthdays. You do, are we seeing a pattern or these are just random numbers? Okay, we gotta do one more. A fifth person, we might have to do five more. A fifth person comes to the party. What's the probability that this person's birthday is different from the first four people? Okay. So if I multiply these five numbers, Notice you got five people, got five numbers. What's the probability that all, I mean, th what does this represent? This is the probability that they all have different birthdays. You guys see the pattern? Yeah. Okay, so this is the probability that they all have different birthdays. What would happen if I subtract this from one? Then you get the complement of that then. What is the complement of they all have different birthdays? No, 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 no. See, that's just like the children with the adults. No. What is the complement of they all have different birthdays? At least two of them have the same birthday. Right? Because what if somebody said, oh, they all have different birthdays. What would it take to prove them wrong? Do you have to prove that they all have the same birthday? No, you just have to prove that oh, at least two of them have the same birthday. So that's the complement. So when you subtract this from one, that is the probability that at least two people have the same birthday, and that's the problem that you have on problem 5B. See, at least two people were born in the same day. Okay, so what if a sixth person came to this party? Well, easy, then look, we know the pattern already. Then this is the answer. This is the probability that at least two of them have the same birthday. What if a seventh person entered? Then you would have this. Remember this pattern now, because that's what you gotta do. Very, otherwise you gotta think of everything from scratch. So look, seven people, seven numbers that you have to multiply together, and then you're gonna subtract from one. Now, so what you do, see these numbers are too big, you guys can't handle this by hand. So what you do is on your calculator, or you can, how many of you, of you are good at writing a program? Computer. Didn't you say you program computer? Could you do that? Mm. Or otherwise, you take out your calculator. So I want to know how many people have to be at this party so that this probability becomes 50%. You know what? I'm just going to 
tell you. It is not 180 degrees. It's only 23 people. And if you don't believe me, multiply 23 of these, subtract it from one, that's the first time it goes over 50%. That's pretty amazing, right? You only need 23 people in a room, and the probability is 50%, at least two people are going to have the same birthday. That's because there's so many times, you know, there's a party, and then so, oh, you have the same birthday as me. That's amazing. That's not really amazing, because it's a, it's a coin toss. It's a 50-50 chance. But then, you know what? 50% is not that impressive. What about 90%? How many people would you need in this room? So what you do is you keep multiplying these numbers until the first time it goes over 90%. That's 41 people. You only need 41 people in a room, and the probability is 90%. At least two people are going to have the same birthday. It is not that amazing. And then what about 99%? How many people would you need in a room? The answer is 58, or is it 57? I forget, it's 57 or 58. All you gotta do is multiply 57 of these, subtract it from one. If it's not 99%, then it's gonna be 58. You just need that one more. So that's not bad, right? If you have went to a party with 57 people, you could just say, hey, I'll bet you $100 at least two people have the same birthday. They're gonna say, no way! I only got 50 something people here. And then you take a poll, and you know what? 99% of the time, you're gonna be right. But then, of course, 1% of the time, you're going to be wrong. So you know what you do? You go to another party. <laughs> no, you don't. Because if you go to 100 parties, probably you're going to win 99 of those, and you're going to lose one. Probably. <laughs> Not guaranteed. Because you could have a really unlucky person, and they could lose every time. It's just like, like oh, I don't know. So anyway, this is the birthday problem. This, you're gonna get quizzed on it. And then, look, it, look at number 10. That's the cabin problem we had from last chapter. Number seven, the committee problem. So uh, don't, don't forget what you did last chapter because we're gonna be doing it again. Here, you know what, since we got time, look. The birthday problem, every single year, there's always a bunch of people that do this. Even though we did it how many times? It's really easy if you know the pattern. Okay, look, look at number five. Three people are randomly chosen. Find the probability, forget A, just do B. Find the probability that at least two people are born on the same day of the week. Okay, that's the birthday problem. Okay, now what if on the quiz I said five people are randomly chosen? Why am I giving it away? So here. Okay, so here, you chose. Here's the five people. Just like right here, right? One, two, three, four, five, right? Except I'm not gonna give you big numbers like that. That's why I make it on days of the week. So, what's the probability that the first person is born on a day of the week? <laughs> seven out of seven, one. But don't write one, write seven out of seven. And then what about the next one? Look if you follow that pattern. Six, seven, five, seven, four, seven, three, seven. You just follow the pattern, it's so easy. And then, so if you multiply these numbers, this is the probability that they all are born on different days of the week. So what do you get when you subtract it from one? That's the probability that at least two of them are born on the same day of the week. So you know what I've done on previous quizzes? I just said like, so on a different planet, there are 10 days of the week. Is that gonna throw you off? Okay. In fact, it was just last year. I said, on another planet, there are 10 days in a week. If I select four of them, what's the probability that at least two people are born on the same day of the week? Well, what do I do? 10 out of 10, 9 out of 10, 8 out of 10, 7 out of 10, subtract from 1. Bam! Can we remember this? Or what if I did months? See, I can make whatever number I want, that that's what you're gonna get. You're gonna get the same problem, it's just gonna be a different number. Now that I told you 10, I'll probably do like, I don't know, 15 days in a week. I think you guys, I think you guys see the pattern. All right, we are finally done. Okay, so like I said, I've been making um, complete solutions, written solutions, because there is none, so I basically
Police spent this weekend and this morning doing that. 